you very much, Karun, and thank you very much for the kind words. It's a privilege and an honor to be with all of you today. And I could say something I've never said at this summit before, which is good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, because this year this is a global summit. And it's open not just to the hundreds that typically join and gather in Boston, but literally to thousands across the world. It's truly a representation of the silver lining that we have with COVID. We have a chance to open up and to engage with so many more of you. We used to call ourselves the JP Morgan of the East, and now I guess we're the JP Morgan Conference of the World. But then I started thinking people don't really like the JP Morgan Conference, so we'll have to think of a new name at some point. Um, but that said, I, a few introductory comments for me. I've had the great privilege, as Karun mentioned, to uh, work with Karun and with an incredible group of committed colleagues on the board of the USA India Chamber of Commerce for over a decade. And I've had the distinct uh, privilege to be able to serve as the master of ceremonies for the past half decade. And it's just been one of the highlights of my year every year. And this one is, is no exception. So let me uh, offer a few introductory comments. And if I can have the first slide, please, up on the screen. So uh, if we can skip to the next slide. It's, we, we're in 2020, and if we look back over the last decade, it's just remarkable what we've accomplished. Just one, um, one illustrative way of demonstrating that is just the number of new medicines that are making their way today through patients. And of course, we look back just over the past few years, a record number of approval, approvals at FDA CEDAR. But it's not just it's not just the number. In fact, we're not in a numbers game. We're in a game of quality when we think about patients. But when, you, in fact, you look at the quality of the medicines that are coming forward, it makes you it makes you scratch your head and wonder: Are we reading science fiction, or are we actually looking at real science? And the answer: It's real science. We're seeing a, an explosion of our understanding of human disease, and we're seeing an explosion of modalities. Cell gene therapies that offer transformative and even curative uh, potential to patients. Next slide. It's, it's really, if we can move to the next slide, please. Uh, we, we've started this uh, theme over the course of the last um, couple of years at the USA India Chamber of Commerce. It's a theme of from N to one to N of a billion, from N to one to N of a billion. We can treat diseases where there are only one patient. We've seen actually work coming out of Tim Yu's lab, and we'll see a video today from Tim Yu that speaks to our ability to make a, me a medicine for one patient. But we've got on the other end of the spectrum, the billions of underserved individuals across the world that we also have to, have to be thinking about. And in this forum, we double click and zoom in on one of the most innovative, exciting, and important regions of the world, and also historically one of the most underserved. But things are changing. India is growing. India is now the fifth largest economy. Um, at the beginning of this decade, India uh, took 90 million of its 1 billion plus people and took them out of poverty. In the last few years, um, President Modi introduced a plan called Modi Care that offered health care to over half a billion people. And we've started to see innovation on the clinical trial front. If you go back a decade ago, the number of global clinical trials that were run in India were a little over a dozen. Today, we have close to 200. It's not where it needs to be, but it's amazing progress that we're seeing in this wonderful um, country, which we have immense commitment to. Next slide, please. But we hit a stumbling block, and Karun mentioned it, and we'll talk about this extensively throughout the day the pandemic caused, caused by SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19, which as of Monday has affected 25 million, 25 million diagnosed individuals across the world and close to a million deaths. This is a real challenge. Next slide, please. But we've risen to the challenge collectively as an industry, as an ecosystem, working together, working collaboratively. We've gone at warp speed. We've gone and we've, we've worked together in ways and at speed, speeds that I don't think any of us could have imagined. We've come together and really truly out of goodwill, we've stepped up to do what we need to do and that's to solve this problem. Groups like the COVID 
R&D Alliance, which is a group of R&D leaders who have come together to enable um, work across the ecosystem. Um, in the US, we have ACTIVE at the NIH. In the UK, we have the recovery trial. Time and time again, we're seeing this industry elevate itself and show itself what it can do. It's really been a remarkable year. And if you look at the speed and pace of even the vaccine development, we scratch our heads again and just wonder, you know, how do we do this? And I know that we'll hear more about this in the panel that's um, to follow. And if we go to the next slide, please, it's been truly a global effort. I've been amazed at what's happened in China and how rapidly China has grabbed hold, implemented public health measures, and essentially brought back um, the life in China essentially to the day-to-day -day where it was before. Really remarkable. Next slide. And I'll just end on a note, a somber note, to remind us that we still have a lot to do. If you look at India right now, India is really battling this pandemic like no other country. Um, India is a country with the third most infections, but the rate of new infections is growing. It took six months for India to see its first uh, million infections. It took another month for the next million, and then it took two weeks for the third million. This isn't a trend that is a positive trend. There's a lot that we have to do to step up to make sure that we not only introduce the right public health measures in India, but ensure that whatever medicine is developed globally as is provided and has access to patients in India. So with that said, I'll end these comments. I think we have an incredible day ahead. It's really a truly remarkable group of people that you will be listening into and having a chance to interact with. 